right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Brief break. Tomorrow is the warmest of the week, but we don't stay above freezing for long when another surge of Arctic air spills into the bi-state. Deep smash, but don't grab much. The South City business is cleaning up tonight after a rash of break-ins. The Ambien defense. There's not a, a published case like that in the United States. A Missouri man claims the popular sleeping pill led him to open fire on cars. Tonight, the I-Team uncovers the state law that prevented him from avoiding prison. Our top story tonight, another frigid night in St. Louis, but we're about to get a break from the bitter cold, but just a brief break. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. Kelly Jackson has the night off. All wind chill warnings and advisories have expired, but Weather First Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is tracking another Arctic surge and more snow. And it won't be a lot of snow that we see, and that's coming Thursday night into Friday. But I want to start with this picture from one of our Weather Watcher Facebook friends on our Five on Your Side Weather Watchers group. This looking from the Gateway Arch over St. Louis, over downtown early this morning. Mark shared this picture with us. Look at the snow covered streets. Temperature around two degrees at this point. Of course, this is just before that disastrous rush hour. And to give you an idea of just how cold it has been. The wind chill finally went above zero this afternoon in St. Louis. The wind chill was at or below zero in St. Louis for 71 consecutive hours. 1945 is when they started hourly observations out of Lambert. This is the longest that wind chill has been that cold in 75 years. Well, you look at temperatures around the area right now and mostly single digits away from town in town still barely in the double digits wind chills close to zero a little below but there's more cold air building up in Canada right now it does have its sights set on the bi-state region it will be plunging our way as we head into Thursday night and Friday that transition should bring us a little bit of snow but snow amounts should be light and this Arctic blast is not nearly as intense as what we just went through. Nonetheless, we'll be talking about dangerously cold wind chills by Saturday morning. We'll see you in a few minutes, Mike. A call for help tonight for the roughly 200 residents forced from their Midtown apartment building due to the frigid temperatures. Five on your side's Holden Kerwicki is here to tell us how they could soon lose their temporary shelter. Holden. Well, Mike, many of the residents at Heritage House are elderly and they had to leave all of their belongings when they were evacuated after a pipe burst flooding the apartments. They told me that a few local guardian angels are helping them through this trying time. For the past 15 years, Cleora Johnson has lived at the Heritage House. It's home. Uh, I've had a lot of pleasant experiences. Fortunately, not too many bad ones. Early Monday morning, Johnson says she felt like she was living in a rainforest. After a pipe burst on the 11th floor, causing the building to be evacuated for the foreseeable future. I think I was in a daze because nobody knew what to do. It was just beyond everybody. Johnson is one of about 85 Heritage House residents who have temporarily been relocated to the Ballpark Hilton. We offered everyone the hotel option. Half went with family, half came to the actual hotel. Property manager Marquita Hamel has vowed to stick by her residents until they're able to return home. It's my job to make sure that they have someone that they know is watching the building and them and uh, that is actually caring about their welfare. That means routine runs back to Heritage House to get essentials that were left behind during the evacuation. If we need to go in and get some medicine and bring it out to them, that's what we're doing. If we need to get some water, some food, we are crying aloud and sparing none and making sure that they are served. The Sansone Group, which owns Heritage House, has paid for residents to stay in the hotel until Friday morning. Right now, I don't have a clue about where I would go. We actually are waiting on Sansone and the specialists that, that we've called in to come in and actually tell us when we'll be back. However, we do know that they will never be without shelter. Well, work is underway to clean up the mess left behind at Heritage House. This is our home. The GM of the Ballpark Hilton told Five on Your Side he considers this a humanitarian situation and will house displaced residents until they can safely return home. I feel like I'm on vacation. <laughs> Let them solve the problem. <laughs> when they get it solved, they'll call me. Now, if you would like to help some of the Heritage House residents get back on their feet, whether that be with toiletries or picking up the tab for a meal, just go to KSDK.com and look for this story under the As Seen on TV tab for more information. Mike. Holden, thanks.
Tonight, the city of Edwardsville is dropping legal action against a church that opened its doors to the homeless during this bitter cold outbreak. The city issued a citation to the First Baptist Church for not having a special permit. The church claims the shelter is covered under a 1969 permit. At the start of tonight's council meeting, the mayor said it was never the city's intention to prevent the shelter from operation. The city's concern was only that the facility was safe for the people staying there and volunteering there. And we are truly sorry that anyone believes any other reasoning might be true. The mayor canceled any citations and an upcoming court appearance. He hopes the city can work with the church to come up with a solution. Tonight, several South St. Louis businesses are dealing with thousands of dollars of damage after a rash of weekend break-ins. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski talked with those business owners who say this isn't the first time they've been targeted. Laura? Yeah, it's not, Mike. And this was hard on all four of these businesses, but especially for Series 6, who just opened a new store less than a week before the break-in. We are still very proud to be in this neighborhood. Series 6 owner Sammy Baldridge says their first full week in the new location on Watson was a blast with lots of community support. You know, it, a lot of people, it's slow for retail, but for us, we're right at the beginning of Mardi Gras and launching that collection. And then we have St. Patrick's Day right after that. So a lot of new and exciting things um, going on at Series 6 right now. But it ended with an unnerving call from their security company in the middle of the night on Friday. Yeah, so unfortunately, um, you know, this weekend we were we were broken into with our side door. The door was shattered to pieces and someone took off with some cash and part of their sales system, but none of the merchandise was taken. We're we're working with a local company. Um, to repair that door. We had a lot of the proper security measures um, in place, so that allowed you know the police to be able to respond um, as quickly as they did. Just down the road, Pint Size Bakery and Coffee was also broken into. Um, but someone threw something through our front door and came in and rifled around looking for money and looking, trying to steal our iPads, but for some reason unable to unplug them. <laughs> Uh, so we lucked out in that only one dollar out of the tip jar was taken. And it didn't stop there. Crazy Bulls and Wraps was broken into, but nothing was taken. And Missouri Baking Company's door was damaged, but they never made it inside. One of the aldermen for the area, Joe Vollmer, says the businesses are already doing what they can, but one thing that would help is increased police presence. Well, more officers. We're a good close to 300 officers shard on the force. And as while there's modern technology to help with that, there's nothing that replaces the fact of seeing a cop drive by and having a cop. Baldridge says right now they're choosing to focus on the good in the neighborhood. And this is just a minor setback and we're gonna, we're gonna get through it um, and be here for many years to come. The store owners tell me they were told by police it was likely the same person or people who broke into each place, and now all of them are going to have to pay upwards of $1,000 to replace their doors, so any help from the community by shopping local goes a long way right now. A legal win tonight for downtown residents who want a gas station to close for good. A judge has revoked a conditional use permit for the Shell station on North Tucker. According to our partners at the St. Louis Business Journal, the ruling stems from a lawsuit brought by the Downtown West Neighborhood Improvement Association. The lawsuit claims gas stations are not allowed in the Central Business District. The owner plans to appeal. Police have been called there more than 1,800 times since 2018. A local case recently put the side effects of Ambien in the spotlight. A man claimed the drug led him to hallucinate while unconscious, leading to violent consequences. Now the I-team has learned how Missouri law made it difficult to keep the man out of prison, even though prosecutors didn't oppose it. Tonight, Five on Your Side's Christine Byers has the latest on the case. Trent Swick went to bed after taking Zolpidem, the generic form of Ambien, on October 12, 2019. The next thing he knows, he wakes up and he's in an orange jumpsuit in the Jefferson County Jail. At some point after taking the pill and going to bed, Swick drove about 30 miles. He opened fire on two random cars along Highway 21, narrowly missing five people. His attorney, Neil Brentrager, says his client told police he believes that he's being chased by um, go-karts that are green go-karts that are being driven by what he describes as furries. When it happened, Swick was an insurance executive and father of three with no criminal history. And he wasn't making sense to responding officers. 
their assumption was that he had either had too much to drink or that he had ingested some sort of narcotic. A toxicology report shows Zolpidem was the only thing in his system. Here's Swick during an interview with the I-team in December. I'm sad, not just of what I caused, but what, what could have occurred, just like that. Swick spent more than two months in jail and the rest of the four years it took to go to court on house arrest. Shortly before trial in late 2023, Swick pleaded guilty to felony charges. Why would he plead guilty? There's no way in the world he could have understood that this drug would create this behavior for him. But under Missouri law, because he voluntarily took that pill, he can't make that claim. And the court might not have let a jury hear the sleeping pill defense. That would have been really unfortunate for someone who really had no idea what he was doing at the time. Dr. William Newman is a forensic psychiatrist who reviewed Swick's case for the defense. It was only his prescription Ambien that was confirmed in his system. And to my knowledge, there's not a, a published case like that in the United States. Newman says he's consulted on other cases involving the sleeping pill defense. One of the clear things to look for is whether there's what's called a rational ulterior motive. Uh, whether there's another explanation other than an ambient induced delirium that could explain the person's criminal actions. In Swick's case? There was no other explanation that, that, that I or, or seemingly anybody else could come up with as to why he would be doing that. A guy with no violent history, no criminal history, uh, who would just wake up and suddenly decide to start shooting people. Jefferson County prosecutors did not oppose probation, but a judge sentenced Swick to seven years with an option for a 120 day drug treatment program. If he completes that program, he could be out in April, even though he only took a sleeping pill as it was prescribed. For the I team, Christine Byers, five on your side. If you have a tip for Christine and the five on your side I team, you can leave a voice message at 314 444 5231 or just send an email to tips at ksdk.com and all calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. Freeway free fall. Tonight, a man is lucky to be alive. What led him to fly from a moving RV? Snow led to slide offs and crashes across St. Louis this morning. Tonight, life saving advice to help you navigate the roads the next time it snows. We're not done with the bitter cold and snow this week, but we do get a break tomorrow. We're tracking when the next round of light snow moves in and the impacts it could have on Friday morning's rush hour. Just one day after former President Donald Trump's historic win in the Iowa caucuses, the GOP presidential hopefuls have moved on to New Hampshire. The Granite State will hold the first in the nation presidential primary one week from today. ABC News has canceled its Republican debate for Thursday night. It comes after Nikki Haley said she would only participate if the former president would be there. Only Florida Governor Ron DeSantis had committed. Trump, who is a front runner in the race, has not participated in any of the debates this election cycle. Caught on camera, a man falls from a moving RV on a freeway outside Los Angeles. You'll be able to see him fly out of the RV after it crashes into the median. The man landed on the shoulder, miraculously avoiding being hit by oncoming traffic. He was actually more conscious than I thought he was going to be. He had a big old gash on his, on his forehead. I think that was from hitting the window. The man was taken to the hospital. The crash is under investigation. Police say the woman driving the RV fell asleep at the wheel. Tonight, area highways are in much better shape than they were 24 hours ago. Last night's light snowfall caused big problems on the roads overnight and this morning. There were several crashes and slide offs. MoDOT tells us it had to limit the amount of treatment on the roads over concerns of refreezing in the bitter cold. AAA, they say they've responded to more than 20,000 calls for emergency roadside help in the last week in Missouri and southeast Illinois. That's an 88% increase compared to the week before. 41% were for dead batteries. 36% of drivers needed a tow. 13% of calls were for flat tires. More snow is on the forecast this week, which means we could see a repeat of what we saw on the roads last night and this morning. Driving can be tricky in all types of weather, and tonight Consumer Reports has some life-saving advice every driver needs to hear. That light on your dashboard may be your only warning that temperatures are low enough for the potential of ice or slick spots on the road. 
Take a look at this police video of a vehicle driving over a patch of nearly invisible ice. The two occupants of this vehicle suffered only minor injuries thanks to their seat belts. If there was ever a time when slow and steady wins the race applies, it's in this case where you have the potential to lose traction. Jennifer Stockberger oversees operations at Consumer Reports Auto Test Center and says it's important that everyone know how to drive in freezing conditions. Everything in slick conditions takes longer. So leave yourself that room. It not only gives you that room, but protects you from other drivers who may not be driving appropriately. Think your four-wheel or all-wheel drive will help on black ice? Think again. All vehicles have four-wheel brakes, and it's actually your car's anti-lock brakes that can help you safely regain control and stop. You'll know the anti-lock brakes are working when they start to pulse against your foot. Do not remove your foot from the brake, maintain firm pressure on the pedal, and let them do their job. And if your car does begin to slide, here's the best way to regain control. There's really two kinds of skids, oversteer and understeer. In both cases, the reaction should be to turn in the direction you want to go. With oversteer, it's very intuitive. You turn into the skid. When you gain grip, you end up going where you want to go. In understeer, you're turning, but the car is going straight ahead, and your gut is to want to dial in more steering. Don't do that. Keep the wheel steady where you're headed so that when you gain grip, you're going where you want to be. In both cases, avoid abrupt motions. And don't forget tires. Properly inflated with good traction, tires can often make the difference when winter weather is at its worst. Newer cars with advanced safety features can also help you avoid an accident, but they can only work properly if they're clear of snow, salt, ice, and mud. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell rejoins us now with that weather first forecast. And Scott, we're going to get a warm up, but it's going to be very brief. Yeah, this one's going to be very brief, but already looking ahead to next week, Yes, there's rain in the forecast for next week, but it's not snow. And once we get above freezing Monday, we stay there for an extended period of time, more so than what we've been dealing with. Things looking a lot different tonight down in Arnold. Roads mainly dry here across the area. There are still a few slick spots here and there. Temperatures are dropping back into the single digits. 10 in Sullivan right now, but DeSoto's three. I think we're going to kind of plateau here, maybe drop another degree or two, and then just hold steady, if not rise a little bit towards daybreak. The wind's already turning to the southwest. We still have wind chills around zero or a little below in some cases but they're not nearly as bitter as what we have seen. How about this? Lynn out at Creve Coeur Lake. Look at the boat ramp kind of frozen there and many of our ponds and lakes do have that coating of ice. Not sure. Don't think it's thick enough in most cases. Certainly not at Creve Coeur Lake to get out on any kind of ice and try to walk on it or skate on it. If you've got a really thin pond, small pond, maybe it's safe enough, but that's risky business because we haven't been below freezing for that long just since Friday. 11 degrees right now in St. Louis. That's southwest breeze at six. Skies are mainly clear right now. We'll see a few high thin clouds tomorrow, perhaps during the afternoon afternoon and evening hours. It's really tomorrow night into Thursday when the clouds start to increase. So enjoy your Wednesday tomorrow in St. Louis. Sure, it starts cold. It'll be around 12 degrees, but hey, you know, we're starting in the double digits. That's a good thing, right? Back to 34 by two o'clock should get three to five hours above freezing as we head into tomorrow. Cold fronts coming through here on Friday. It is an Arctic front, maybe a few flurries during the evening, but we think any snow that accumulates is holding off to late evening and into the overnight hours. But this will be patches of light snow that come through our area just in time to lay down another coating to maybe an inch for the early morning rush hour on Friday. During the day on Friday, maybe a couple of stray flurries, but generally the clouds kind of scatter out but it's cold and only in the teens. So light snow, it'll be a weather alert day here on Friday. Light snow Thursday night, very early in the morning. Temperatures will be falling into the teens on Friday and maybe a dusting to two inches. So snowfall totals probably on the higher side, inch and a half to two inches farther north of St. Louis. But as we saw last night and early this morning, it doesn't take a lot when temperatures are cold. And once again, we'll be in the teens by Friday morning, maybe around 10 degrees. And so as a consequence, everything's going to stick and everything's going to get slick and sloppy again. Yeah. All right, Scott, thanks. Mm -hmm. Corey is up next with sports.
We had a couple of dramatic games on the college basketball court for SLU and Mizzou, and I have a Battle Hawks quarterback update right from the head coach himself. Sports is up after the break. This Five on Your Side Sports Report is sponsored by Tele Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. It has not been particularly fun to be a Mizzou or SLU basketball fan so far this season. Missouri is 106th in the Ken Palm rankings and St. Louis is 205th. That's just another way of saying it's going to be an uphill battle to make the NCAA tournament. Both teams were on the road tonight against tough conference opponents. SLU has not won at Dayton in a decade. They came out tonight with plans to change that. Mike Meadows for three. SLU takes the lead in the first half. Brad Azawaro going to bully his way in for two points of his own. SLU still in the lead. They led by two at the half. Dayton roared back into the lead in the second, but SLU kept fighting as a world. Five-point game, eight and a half left. Here was the best player tonight, though. Dayton's Duran Holmes steal slam. He had 29 points. Bill still would not quit. Gibson Jimerson for three. Six-point game with 2.30 left. They could not get all the way back, though. Dayton hit some big ones late, and they foil SLU's upset bid with a 70-65 victory. Sean East, Dennis Gates, and Mizzou trying to avoid an 0-4 start in the SEC. They took on Alabama tonight. East with the vision, football pass. Jesus Carolel Martin, early bucket. This was chippy all night long, and look at Bama head coach Nate Oates. He pushes Mizzou's Aiden Shaw. I didn't know that was allowed. The Tigers were pesky most of the night. Nick Honor from the corner for three. That made it a two-point game in the second half. But the tide exploded down the stretch. Look at all these threes. Ryland Griffin was the hottest. He had five three-pointers in this game. Bama runs away down the stretch to sink Mizzou under 500 with a 93-75 loss. Here's Gates on that shove from Oates. Nate, Nate apologized after the game. I, I've known Nate since he was a high school coach in, in Detroit. Uh, but I just posed the question, if that was players in a huddle with a hand on an opponent, what would take place? It would be an automatic technical foul, right? I thought I saw two referees in the huddle. It wasn't a technical foul. Now that we know the Battle Hawks are back and what league they'll be playing in, it's time to talk about the roster. Today, last year's XFL Special Teams Player of the Year, Darius Shepard, confirmed he's among those returning. Of course, the biggest question, though, remains at quarterback. A.J. McCarron was a fan favorite last season. The former Alabama QB threw for an XFL leading 24 touchdowns for the Battle Hawks in 2023. He impressed the Cincinnati Bengals, too, who added him to their active roster this past NFL season. Now it's time for A.J. to decide if he wants another ride as a Battle Hawk. Here's Coach on the current QB situation. We'll know that quarterback room, what that'll look like here in a couple weeks. Once we, you know, A.J.'s taking some time with his family, we can start talking about like what that looks like. Uh, but regardless who's playing quarterback, we, we like our room from last year. I want all those guys back. You know, Nick Tiano won us a game against Vegas. We really like him. We think he's a starter in this league. Manny Wilkins, our third guy last year, we think he can win in this league. So, again, there's going to be competition across the board. Maybe the brightest spot from 2023 for the Cardinals was Adam Wainwright getting to the 200 win mark. Catcher Wilson Contreras got to see the milestone win up close from behind the plate. To get to 200, Waino gutted out shoulder pain and the general aches of being 42 years old. But that's the takeaway Contreras has from being his teammate. You can tell, but he never, he never regrets it and, and he never gave up. That's one thing that um, I took away from him, just watching just watching him go through his business and, and it was really impressive because nobody, like, not many people go uh, through his business the way he did. There's no doubt Wilson Contreras loves being a St. Louis Cardinal. I'm betting on a better year two for him here in St. Louis. And hopefully a lot less controversy. That would be nice. Regarding the team. Yes. All right. Thanks, Corey. Well, Shafley has a new brew and you can still take a sip if you're partaking in dry January. The St. Louis Blues, they're asking everyone who bleeds blue to roll up their sleeves tomorrow. Their annual blood drive comes as the Red Cross has an urgent need of donations. Donors will receive a free t-shirt. There are 10 locations spread out on both sides of the river. We have a full list in the As Seen on TV section at KSDK.com. Hometown favorite Nelly is joining Janet Jackson on tour this summer, and they're bringing their show to the Lou. Jackson's Together Again tour will stop at Hollywood Casino Amphitheater on June 21st. Tickets will go on sale Friday on Live Nation's website. Pre-sales begin tomorrow at 10 a.m. 
Shafley is releasing a new beer during dry January. The non-alcoholic brew is inspired by the St. Louis Craft Brewery's signature pale ale. And each can is just 35 calories. And Scott has one final check of this chilly weather. We're looking for 35 degrees. That's what we're looking for. Shooting Indeed. for that for tomorrow. Right now, temperatures single digits most areas. We are leveling out at this point for the overnight lows under a clear sky. So we won't get a whole lot colder than what it is right now. And tomorrow, we're up to 37, so there'll be a chilly breeze tomorrow, but still better than it has been. Indeed. And there you have it, 5 on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Don't forget to start your day with Today in St. Louis beginning at 4 a.m. Have a great tomorrow.